Okay, uh, hello everybody. Uh, my goal today was to bring people interested in contributing to Joomla and uh, wanting to improve things. So the title of the talk was chosen by Nick, who is here with me. Um, and the most funny thing is that a bit later in that day, my wife, who didn't need to go out, asked me to go to change the laundry in the cellar. <laughs> and later in the same day, uh, I realized that it was the uh, last day to pay taxes, so that I had to compute how much I had to prepay them some. Uh, it happened, actually. So, uh, contributing code to Joomla should be something which is fun in my mind and contributing code to open source and ver working on a volunteer base should be something fun mm -hmm. and obviously much more fun than doing laundry and taxes. Um, this today is not a talk, it's more a discussion. So um, I'm just having a few slides to heat up the topic a bit. The contribution workflow today is that usually if you want to provide a new feature, or provide an improvement on an existing feature, you discuss that on a Google group first. You try to find a consensus there so that you implement something in a way which is agreeable to the group. Then go to GitHub, fork Joomla, edit your changes, save, and make a pull request. Uh, very easy and actually quite fun. Uh, compared to previous installations that you had to make. Now, obviously you need people to be aware of that. So um, you need to make some publicity. You need to, disc to, to tell that in the Google group. You might want to tweet that out so that people get aware of your pull request. Then you will be having questions on the GitHub. You will have good feedbacks that you are usually happy to integrate because you learn something uh, on that way also. So that's still very, very fun. But then discussions continue on GitHub. Then some people with maybe less uh, programming knowledge start to ask a lot of questions on Google. It might get into politics. Then it might go over to the forums. And then suddenly you have three discussions going on, if not on Twitter also. And you have four discussions going on. A lot and a lot and a lot, and that takes more time than all the rest that you did before, including the discussions that you did preliminary. And then sometimes you have to wait forever because of all these discussions. Um, no decision has been made, and things keep, the, the pull requests keep open. Sometimes they get rejected, sometimes with a reason, sometimes without reason. And sometimes with luck, you get accepted. So these two last steps. <laughs> are not the fun part. <laughs> um, and it makes the whole experience having a bitter taste. And I think we need to improve those two last steps in a good way. But also, we need to realize that those two last steps are not performing that well. Because up here, we have a trouble too. Because often the people who are here are not the he people who are there doing the acceptance at the end. So probably those steps here need to be improved. The things in between, I think, are quite well done today. Now just hot off a Skype chat, and we'll be reading that for you, so that um, also those who are in the back can see this. That's uh, last week. Um, I don't remember if, if Nick or me asked uh, one of the developers on our team, uh, what's the status of the CB outer plugin for Joomla 2.5? That got broken um, in Joomla 1.6 or something like that. We, we are not able to do a link from the outer name in a Joomla article to the CB profile <laughs> because of some uh, decisions to HTML special chars um, the output which is inserted by Joomla plugins. So that's broken. 
and um, we asked what's the status for Joomla.5 because we asked to test if it was okay again. So the reply is that uh, it works in article, but if you are viewing an article in category pages, that screws up from the fifth article onwards. So it's clearly a bug <laughs> because the five first work and the, from the fifth it doesn't work. So I think I asked the question, have you proposed a patch fix to Joomla for that? Reply, no. I said, yeah, you should. <laughs> With a smile, you know, you should really propose a patch fix. The reply is that last three times I proposed something, I was ignored. I will spend the time when they begin to care. You really should uh, do that. And his reply, that that's, that's copy-paste from the chat. <laughs> it's not something invented. It's frustrating because my time is limited. I have a lot to do daily from support, bug fixes, development work, debugging, investigations, and the list continues. And when I take that valuable time to contribute to Joomla and they ignore me, they might as well be spitting in my face. He asked me to remove that when I asked him for permission. <laughs> and I think it's, it's, it's good to have the real text which was there. Because that feeling of being spit in your face when you try to contribute and to help is something which leaves that bitter space. So obviously I was not happy there. And he, he continues, I have posted on the tracker and on GitHub. Then I'm told to post on Google Groups. Why have a bug tracker and GitHub if you are going to ignore it? <laughs> Part of the problem, we have too much communication channels there. Part of the problem is on the other side, uh, not enough people. And that's a very easy uh, bug which is there with a fix. Um, these, those, those three have been posted there months ago and uh, are getting ignored. So my proposal is that we try between us to find ways to fix that today. I'm not saying that we're fixing that today, but to find a strategy in a, in a way to fix that and make that fun again. So what's the perceived problem there? There's a wall, in my opinion. There's a wall between extension, professional extension developers and other contributors which are on one side of the wall reporting problems, bugs, doing feature requests or feature proposals actually, and the other side of the wall, uh, which might be uh, Joomla developers which have commit rights, which might be uh, bug team sometime, and uh, the visibility from one side to the other is about like on that picture. Another problem that I have seen quite often is uh, when we report a bug, that from a bug squad team there is somebody who replies who has much less expertise in PHP, JavaScript, or any programming language, but who is there to help. And by trying to help the most possible, <laughs> actually the perceived thing in the other side is, oh, I'm starting to lose my time because I need to, re re to try to explain everything. And once you try to explain everything, then you might not be understood and you lose a lot of time there. And the other person from the other side also loses a lot of time. But most importantly, the project does that. Now, all of that has, makes co causalities. How many have hit that wall? How many of them are not coming back for more? <laughs> And how many saw so that, how it's happening on those trackers, on those Google groups, and don't even try, but we have great things to contribute. So I think that this small issue that we have here, if solved properly, could have a multiplying effect for Joomla. One possibility to fixing the problem, but I'm just giving one solution here, <laughs> and I think that the other solutions should be coming from the room, is to make holes into that wall. A small hole where people can go to the other side to see how it's on the other side. <laughs> Build transparency. Bring people to the other side. Show them how, for instance, for a bug fix, it needs to be tested. 
and they could, could send uh, a friend or two of them on the other side to go to test because they don't want to test themselves their own bug fix. You know, it's normal for quality. But if they can send somebody to test on the other side, the next time the other, peop the other person who has a bug fix can send you on the other side, and you will be bringing in people uh, of, with knowledge uh, on both sides. Bring also people from the review department from the other side into fixing bug and proposing on their side so that they see the problems, but they won't be seeing that problem because they know the people, so they just Skype them and <laughs> the problem is solved. We should need to show unity in our goals. Maybe be more agile in the agile development sense. And of course, your uh, ideas here are much better than mine. Uh, I don't have a solution there, and I'm, but I'm sure that if we work all together, including people from the PLT team, uh, we will find a solution. And the goal today is to discuss, to find a solution, uh, to try to bring peers in uh, on both sides, and set next steps in a constructive, creative pro uh, manner for, for a solution. This is not a criticism, it's not bashing, <laughs> it's just expressing loudly um, feelings of people who are not in this room now. And some people we have been talking to and saying, come join us. I'm not seeing them here because they told me I'm just going to get mad. <laughs> uh, so, um, okay, they're not here, but uh, there are more people than in this room which uh, share that, that uh, idea that we should fix something there. Okay, so I would suggest that we now go to the second step. If maybe somebody of you is a developer and would like to share an experience or two. Yeah, sure. Is there a there is a microphone, I will give it to you. That's a good idea. Yeah. And then uh, yeah. it can be this way. Yeah. Um, well, I'm a third party developer and um, about three years ago or so, uh, I've committed also a couple of fixes for, uh, for the Joomla core. And well, adding them to the bug tracker and my, my report, the, the pr reply I got was actually, well, it's not a bug, it's a feature. And then it got removed. And well, it happened like four or five times. And then, well, then you're sitting down and going to do the taxes or the laundry and uh, forget about the whole thing instead. Um, but actually to, to find a solution for that with a whole new procedure, then you're getting actually to the point of discussion. And there's, there's another way to avoid the discussion, and that is basically, let's do it just better. And that is, uh, provide the fix, make sure that people can use the fix, and, well, and then keep using the fix until the core team sees, uh, hey, uh, the fix is being used so many times, so now it's maybe worth to have a discussion to actually use it and implement it into the, into, into the core. And I've, I've been actually been interested in a very, um, uh, well, in, in, a, in a solution that popped up uh, maybe one year or two years ago already. Um, there's uh, this uh, extension called uh, No Number Advanced Module Manager. It's a pretty known uh, extension. And there's a second extension, also an advanced module manager doing the same thing. And I can't think of the name currently, but um, it's Mod Manager, that's the name. And it's actually doing the same thing. So within the core, you have Joomla modules. Uh, and modules uh, are being loaded through uh, a SQL query. Uh, but then if you have an advanced module manager, you want to decide like what conditions are there to load the actual module or hide the module, remove it. Um, and both extensions were doing the same trick. And they needed to rewrite the jmodule helper class. So what they did was override it. But then if the first extension would override it, the second extension would be unusable, or if the second would override it, then the first would be unusable. So the fix they had was basically, well, override the same class with the same code. So they shared the same code base, uh, made the whole class a lot better, and currently, um, well, I'm, I'm the developer of MageBridge, and I'm facing the same problem. And I, what I did was just implement the same solution. So now you have three extensions which are using the same fix. And basically, we don't care anymore whether it's getting into the core or not. We have our fix. It's a good fix. It's a good add-on to the core. 
but if nobody decides to implement it, well, it's already out there and it's already doing its job. So, and I have the feeling that actually um, overriding core libraries just to fix the problem is something we can do ourselves already. And so why bitch around like, well, <laughs> if it's not possible, then, then uh, for sure like a solution needs to be... Uh, <laughs> yeah. So It's something that you have in the Macintosh library. If you know uh, the Macintosh library, and I work on the uh, library in 1995, something like that on Mac, uh, they have a core that was in a prom, and if you have a fix or something to change, effectively you can provide via a kind of DLL the fix for the components. So it's a solution that can be helpful to distribute, I will say, temporarily, uh, a fix because uh, in my case I I saw some cases uh, with a new uh, method for a uh, uh, bug uh, fix for the uh, Joomla 1.7 for example or uh, 1.6 uh, they say okay we start to fix security fix but not functional fix uh, and we delay for six months, but can you wait for six months to have a fix? You have customers on the other side that would like to have the fix. So if you need the fix, you need to provide a solution. For the moment, uh, when I cannot do an override uh, with legal method, uh, in my case, I hack the code and I do, uh, I will say, search replace in the code uh, when I install and I fix uh, everywhere. It's not beautiful. This is the reason why I happy to be here and uh, be able to discuss with uh, some people in the platform or in low level to try to improve and perhaps open the door to do what you explain, to be able to override when necessary to provide a temporary solution that can be adhered by the people because you develop something, you would like to be published, perhaps temporarily provided from your website but uh, if it's uh, well uh, uh, used, why do not include or give an alternate solution or say, okay, you have that, 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 the core is this one, but you have potentially fix that do that. Do you agree? And after that, perhaps the community will say, okay, the fix that is proposed by this guy is not today uh, present in the core, but we see effectively it should be adhered. So the discussion that you add will be reduced because you will have adopters. So your proposal is good, but should be extended for more, in my case, low-level parts that are not necessarily open. <laughs> so. You still need a solution sooner or later, yeah? And that's, that's, I think, one of the problems. And I think one of the problems in the past, well, my experience, actually, was that... Um, you find a problem, then if you if you um, uh, well tell the bug squad, for instance, that there is a problem and it should be solved, and even perhaps add a fix, then actually to close to all the tasks uh, they have, to, so they they have uh, so many bugs, and these bugs cannot stay open forever. So that they 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 have have used these tactics actually to close bugs um, instead of actually fixing it, but at least the bug was closed on the back bug tracker. And I think, I think the, uh, taking a different approach is just to have a huge list of open bugs. For sure that, that's not still fixing the problem, but if, if everybody knows it's still open for two years, three years, four, per, uh, four years, it's, it's showing the problem. Um, and just making the list smaller just to get, get going again um, is not providing the actual solution. So I think uh, part of the, the, the solution is, is to list all the, the feature requests, all the bugs, all everything that is open, and perhaps not in the, the core bug tracker, but more like uh, in a, a separate bug tracker, which is perhaps never going to be uh, handled, but for sure then it's, it's notified or it's, it's, it's put there on a purpose so that everybody is, is seeing it, so it's there on display. 
Yeah, I, I haven't in particular seen that, that happen. I know we've got some in there that have been there for over two years. So <laughs> and, and, you know, one of the problems is getting people um, finishing the whole process. Like we've got over, you know, I don't know what it is, five or six pages right now of pending items, items that we have solutions for that are in there that we can't find people to test. So we've got, you know, over a hundred things that, and we could get those into the next, you know, release that's coming out in a couple of weeks, but yeah. we can't find people to test these things. Yes, you have to say it as a test, and also uh, sometimes the problem is to create the test, not only to test on your side, but sometimes it's difficult to provide the scenario that allows to people to retest, because you have an environment that is sometimes complex, that you can uh, arrive to a, a specific situation because your extension doing things that was perhaps not predicted uh, or imagined, and uh, you are in a specific scenario and you are able to reproduce that, but you have 10,000 lines of code around. Try to find and seize the time that you have to spend to extract the correct context to be able to reproduce in uh, 50 lines. Sometimes it's very complex to arrive to summarize the problem because you have identified it. Uh, in my case, I have identified one case a uh, long time ago for the session. I have submitted the file. There is three lines to add, to say, if not, use the default. That uh, was okay, the case for the users. I submitted, I have described, uh, I published uh, in attachment in the tracker the file with a fix. And finally, as you mentioned, they say, uh, we are not able to reproduce, so we, don't, so we do not include. But if you are a technical guy and you read, you see the code is so simple, why we do not include these two lines? Uh, even if you are not able to reproduce, you read the code and why reject or uh, postpone? So uh, finally, uh, I include that in my code. Uh, uh, to Actually, I think that there are two problems. Uh, one is testing, uh, because of uh, it seems to be very hard to get testers. Of course, we could do it in a way like, if you test my bug, I will test yours. Mm -hmm. uh, it could work, but uh, uh, that's one problem. But another problem is that if you uh, add a bug into bug trigger, and uh, then uh, someone is going to see it. It depends on the person who is uh, going to see, uh, to look and comment on it. Uh, depend, uh, because of people are, uh, have different interests and uh, different kind of, uh, skill levels. So it really depends on who happens to go there to your bug. So you actually you need to know someone. Uh, please, can you go to my bug and just add a comment? Right. In general, when you have a bug, Joomla already tested a lot of things, but your bug is very specific. So the skills required to analyze the bug frequently request a, a high level because you can have an extension that is specific and the context can be uh, not easy to test. So I agree totally with you that it's not easy uh, and to find the right person to do the test is not easy. You know the problem, but how to explain, how to reproduce, and how to find the guy that will understand the problem to reproduce or imagine a test case. It should be a case, uh, uh, approximately the developers of the problems that will be uh, there. It's not easy. Huh? It's not some, some people will actually go and they'll look at it and they'll say, oh, that's too hard to test. <laughs> and then they'll actually go on to the easier ones. You know, you do have that, that problem. To, to comment on that. Um, I think the key word is actually agile, because agile uh, testing or agile development sounds really cool for us to fix the problems we have, but it also poses a problem for the Joomla core team, because the, the Joomla project is so huge, there's so many users, and just adding three lines could, could well um, make sure that the fix is applied properly for 95% of all the situations, but it may, may still be that for 5% it's causing huge, huge problems. So th the problem with the bug tracker is actually proper testing is always needed, so therefore we, we can't just say, well, 
Um, I've tested it along with four or five guys, and we found out that the bug is fixed now. So uh, forget about testing yourself; just commit it to the, the to the, the to the main um, uh, source and and publish it. And there's your new uh, Joomla version. So I agree, actually, that um, the bug tracking team should be um, well should be difficult <laughs> to accept any any patch being offered. But we, we still have the problem. And f for me, <laughs> um, I'm an agile developer. Um, I came to this uh, J and Beyond uh, while just pub publishing a new uh, download component uh, three hours before I left. And I didn't really test it properly. So when I arrived here, I had a lot of cu uh, customers and a lot of users <laughs> complaining about that. Uh, because my user base is just not so big as the Joomla user base. And I think th the problem is actually that these two worlds so like the, 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 the local or the, 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 the personal developers with a user base smaller and the Joomla developers with, well, the largest user base possible in, in the Joomla sphere. And these two worlds collide basically because of the testing process. And how to fix that? It could be fixed, for instance, by applying different branches. So if you have your own Joomla branch in some way or another that you could apply your fix and uh, you're going to test it out, for instance, on all your community builder uh, users, then you actually have uh, 10,000 or ten, tens of thousands of users who are going to test that fix anyway. And then after a half year of, of running that, then you could at least say, well, I didn't test it for four or five users. Now I tested this with 30,000 users and they've been using it without problems. And that's perhaps adding into like, well, the, the assurance you have to have when fixing something. Well, and actually, um, in order to get something through, we need two good tests. So, at, at least, yeah. And there are some issues that, that if it hits a lot of things and it could be um, an issue, we'll definitely want to want to get more. Um, and if it's a simple CSS fix or something like that, we'll go through with one um, because Often those kind of things that, you know, it might, it's just a visual, <laughs> you know, it won't, won't really affect the processing. So, um, I mean, so, and you're talking about Agile there, it's like some of these fixes that we have in there have been in there, say, for a couple of months, and things have been changing, and it's been building up more and more things. So if some of these had gotten the two tests and got, gotten right in, um, you'd have a lot less problems than now you go through and we try to do a hundred of them all at once. We're going to have a lot more that are going to bump, be bumping into each other as we go to actually commit them. So we definitely would like to see things happen a lot faster. Um, particularly, you know, if it's like the three lines um, and, and things like that. So, so for that that instance, yeah, there's there's a problem, and what we'd like to see is, you know, how can we get more people? And maybe the I'll test yours if you'll test mine <laughs> is very helpful. Some people will actually post something to a Google group, sort of um, trying to get people to please test my thing. So, any suggestions on that? Uh, I think that first one would be move to GitHub and have the. Uh, forking there and uh, then the discussion it would be much easier yeah we've been planning on doing that for a while the the issue we have right now is um, we just meet, need to move the the tracker and we are working on solutions so that um, so that we've got a, a good tracker somewhere else and with the features like for 3.0 we're doing those completely on um, GitHub. The only thing we're doing is that because it's the only tracker we have, we're still using the feature tracker just to have one place where there's a list of the different things that are happening. But all the work is happening over on GitHub and just put um, a, a link to the to the pull request so that we just have a place to, to keep hold of it. But everything else will be on, on GitHub. So hopefully we'll get the new tracker in at some point and um, that'll make things a little bit easier. But I think so too. We need to remember that people reporting bugs and going through the bug tracker not necessarily are developers. They might not know how to use GitHub as, as we do. That's important because that could be part of the wall that people report a bug, but 
hey, what to do, who to contact next, etc. It could be set up by some some sort of guide uh, at Joomla.org instead. That's one thing. Um, I think the second thing you mentioned earlier, were we need more testers. And like you said, people are on a different level. I can't do it with some of the high-level stuff that Michael does, but I can for sure close 10 CSS fixes fast. Um, I remember that situation around 1.6 where there were many, many pages that were closed without being looked at. They were old and there were different reasons for it. I were against it. So a few days before it, I went through the bug tracker. I took as many items that were not priority one, two, or three, but these easy CSS fixes, these easy things that means a lot to a lot of users anyway, and went through them. And I remember Mark and Elin, they were not mad, but they <laughs> it wasn't appreciated that I didn't give priority one or two as much focus as I did on the other fixes because I knew it was going to happen. I tried to take as 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 most low-hanging fruits at that point, and that's needed sometimes also. Uh, <laughs> we need a circle kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned like um, having different kinds of testers. So basically, well, end users, web designers, developers. Um, but you also mentioned like end users could submit um, a bug to the to the tracker and not describe it properly. But then uh, developers could also um, give uh, well. B b so basically, what b what it could suggest is that uh, there are different types of uh, users, different levels, um, and without knowing these levels, actually, you don't know actually how good a fix is. So if uh, there's uh, there's a new developer um, uh, who, who doesn't have a name as a developer and he still provides a PHP fix, then probably you want to do more testing than somebody who is already familiar within the whole Joomla community. Um, and the same for an end user. So if an end user is, is reporting a bug, actually the description of that bug should not be taken literally because it's an end user. So you have to rephrase it, you have to reinvestigate it, and etc. So would actually um, having a, a user profile, uh, would it be any good on the, on the bug tracker? So having an extra indication per user, what kind of user that person is? Well, the problem is of course going to be who's going to maintain that, but that's another question. I mean, you could do something where you're starting to, I don't know, the, the karma or various things. At least you know this person has you know, submitted X number of patches or has, um, you know, tested X number of different things so that you look at it and you see that, oh, you know, they're, they're uh, somebody who submitted a number of patches, chances are, you know, they're not the new person on the block or something. So, you know, there are a few things. There was, there was a session uh, yesterday uh, talking about gamification. Maybe that could be some part of the process, being a tester or developer. We all know who's skilled in developing in here, sitting in the corner, not saying anything. Uh, but but who who knows who who does the testing? And these guys need more appreciation. I think as a community, we we need to embrace them more. I want to see uh, yesterday evening with the J Oscars. I think there should be more about the box squad and these guys actually helping getting rewarded for it in, in some way. And credi uh, visible credibility could be one part and gamification, like say you get to be a poor bug tester after you tested two bugs, but you get to be an expert after tested 30 bucks. Something like that could be maybe implemented and used. That, that would mean a big thing. <laughs> Another thing that we could work on is make it easier to get into the bug squad and making it more reliable to stay there. I think more re 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 reliable to be to be staying there. Uh, I don't know how much times I have joined the bug squad. 
and how much times I have been silently removed without any message. But it's probably four or five times over the last five years. Um, because because uh, probably I wasn't active enough testing there. Also, in the process, when somebody submits a bug, great, thank you, he could get a message on his screen. Thank you very much for having found and taken the time to submit a bug. The best way for your bug to be tested by peers is now to go and test two other bug fixes, which are on the tracker. Right now, yourself, without having to sign up, without having to find uh, an IRC chat somewhere, without those things, and just go in and test as easily as you would have reported the bug. That's the first thing. The second thing is that uh, years ago, all main extensions or large extensions were invited, not only that we ask to join, but we were invited to come into the bug squad because then we had the information when a new release would be coming. And in the week or the days before the release was coming, we could do a quick test of non-regression for our main components. That had a big benefit for the end user because he had much, more, much less issues with upgrading his Joomla site, which didn't break the main extensions which were out there. It had a great benefit for the extension developer because uh, oh, mm, a new bug release came out. I need now to s drop everything and ask my own t test team to test my extension. <laughs> and oh, mm, they found, uh, they, they, they introduced a new bug. I need to fix that now in my component, to work around in my component. And when you start doing that at each new Joomla release, even mi minor one, you end up by saying, okay, now each time I fix something, I stop using data, that API in Joomla because next time that API has a bug, I am, don't care about it anymore. And if you uh, submit three, four, five bugs and they don't, didn't, care, didn't care about it, then you stop submitting. You just ignore and you build your own library, your own API because you won't be, be less subject to Joomla core bugs, bugs of bug fixes, and evolutions like the MVC be of 2.5, 1.5 being phased out in the later Joomla release, <laughs> and basic libraries which have been phased out, like the params which became fields, you know, such small renamings which look great on the screen for the developer, but the end user doesn't care. And how many hours have been lost by end users? How many hours have been lost because they just changed the meaning of something or, or, or things like that? So you start, you know, have a large extension, you start developing your own library and don't, not using the Joomla one, which is a pity. Because if you use the Joomla one, then you, then you contribute improvements to the Joomla one and everybody profits from that as a community and not only your component. So, we need to bring back the dynamic that we had years ago and that we lost over time while growing, outgrowing the management and the leadership. So we need to come back. Well, I, I think that that's what you say about that, that the Joomla framework should be flexible enough to uh, make, make big changes actually easy to cope with for developers. Um, and it, that, that it should be flexible enough to apply c f fixes quickly so you don't have to use your own parent libraries. Well, it's, it sounds, sounds useful and it sounds like an ideal thing, but I'm, I'm disagreeing that it should be actually the, the, the final goal because uh, as an example, um, I've been following the Nuku framework for a long time and I've written exactly one Nuku extension and I'm still attending every Nuku e event out there and not to actually um, have anything useful for, for code out of it, but to get the, the right IDs and actually to have your own parent libraries uh, instead of the st using the, the Joomla libraries. Um, it's also making my life a lot easier because I don't have to read other people's code and it, it sounds like it's the opposite of what open source is meant like but actually it's, it could also be seen like uh, a profitable thing 
the only thing is actually that that if you build something good in uh, your own libraries, because there's something mis missing within the, the Joomla framework, um, perhaps it's still a good idea to, to well share that amount of work. So the, the bug is still there actually, but um, for, for me, I, I don't like to focus on problems that cannot be fixed, because every problem can be fixed with an ugly override or whatever, um, but it's still the, 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 the benefit of open source is to work together to uh, a better situation. The problem uh, that uh, our friends here are going to be there, uh, exposed is something very, very, very important and uh, is uh, related to, I would say, legacy mode. The problem that we have encountered with 1.6, 1.7, 2.5, uh, if you see that from, I would say, uh, a business company, you see the effort that you have to just maintain the compatibility when you create an extension, just to make it compatible, and that you have perhaps, I will say, 200, 300 major third party extension that has to do the same job. If we had created the core that contained the legacy mode as uh, proposed now between 2.5 and 3.0, potentially I suspect because they have a feedback to say uh, it's a painful <laughs> for that. Because if you see that in terms of management, you see the effort for the core Joomla to maintain uh, the legacy mode. I can tell you that I have almost 30 years uh, development in C, C++, and so on. I create application for banks. I can tell you that you cannot create a new version of something that is not compatible with the previous version. You must keep the compatibility because the effort, the number of persons that can be impacted by a small change, rename uh, the name of a database connection that was underscore uh, connect. After that, that is uh, called underscore database. Now is database, no more underscore. Things like that is a nightmare because people may use this field. When you have to retest or qualify or have a, an, a third party extension that try to provide a code that is still 1.5 compatible with 2.5 or 1.7, each time you have to say, oh, if uh, Joomla uh, version X uh, do that or create API. I can tell you with my third uh, uh, party extension, I review a lot, a lot of extension. I read the code to see what they do. And I agree what I have uh, here today. Most of the extension are creating their own API and do not call anymore directly uh, Joomla. Either they implement uh, the thing themselves or they create the interface that convert and call the appropriate uh, uh, Joomla uh, version. Well, I, I agree with you that, that there's a problem, that, that a lot of third-party developers are uh, having the same problems, and then uh, solving the solution by creating their own parent libraries. But uh, parent libraries, or uh, libraries, or your fixes, or uh, So, for instance, a compatibility layer, um, that, that's one of the, the issues. But I wonder whether it's, it's, um, it's correct to actually point to the Joomla core team to, f to solve that problem. Well, actually it's showing a different thing, and that is uh, third-party developers are perhaps not working together uh, as much as they should do. If, if I compare things with Drupal, I've, I've been in the Drupal community also for a few years, and I was always amazed that actually when uh, somebody had a problem, first all the developers, not, not within the core, but the third party developers would look around and ask like, well, is anybody busy with this? And if not, somebody would start the project. But for instance, the CCK, well, there are, uh, I, I don't keep count, but there's like a dozen uh, CCKs for, for Joomla, and there's only one for Drupal. 
um, th there are like a, a dozen e-commerce solutions for Joomla, and there's only one Uber card for uh, Drupal. And that's showing basically that, that uh, the Joomla core team is being made responsible for a lot of th different things. But if, if for instance, the comp compatibility layer is an issue, um, why is there not a common third-party developer uh, or third-party development uh, movement going on to create such a layer? And it's, it's a difficult question. I don't have the solution, but it's, it's perhaps showing a problem. Uh, I have not uh, the solution for that. I just uh, want to say that when you uh, maintain the application on the core, you have to keep in mind that you need to be compatible with the previous version. Why I have highlighted the point and, and when I agree, we have a problem of resource. We have a problem to test. We have a problem to find the guy. If we release, we forget the time because we spread. Uh, perhaps you spend one week, two weeks, again, one week, two weeks for the same problem. The origin of the problem is the same. If we have took this week and this week and you multiply that, that by 200 or 300 uh, third party extension, you see the number of weeks available in terms of resource to do something else. Imagine that you didn't do anything eh? when you do the compatibility. Where do you, do you progress? In my case, I spent one year and a half today and not yet finished to convert all my extension into .5. I still have to do it. Not finished. Because I have to revamp plenty of things. I'm losing my time and I do not provide any added value. So if we want to get the resource for the debug, for the tracking, uh, try to waste uh, losing time. This is the idea, I think. We, we say we spend a lot of time uh, in face of the wall, but we spend also a lot of time to find or search to continue to progress. we working uh, in a round. So it's just a, a, a problem of resource and not a solution uh, to say legacy in terms of can be a solution to reduce the cost. Uh, I'm all also seeing the same problem in uh, uh, the, the implementers. They are stopping ver uh, using Joomla framework because uh, it just costs too much money to use it. So they are actually building their own. Uh, what do you uh, I, I, I'm working as a contractor for one company and they are starting to make their own framework over Joomla. Stopping using Joomla because of the just oh, they're just stopping Joomla entirely. Uh, no, they are using Joomla, but they are not using a framework inside of Joomla. Mm -hmm. I think we saw that some time ago too with um, with Nicholas and, and Nuko going to Nuko and going back. I think you are, are right. There needs there probably needs to be some sort of compa compatibility layer, legacy layer, uh, but but we need to move on, and at some point. You need to upgrade your code. I think more what's needed is, like we talked a little bit about yesterday, um, more examples and saying, hey, if you use J error class, this is how you do it when you need to support the next version of the platform. And one more comment uh, on you. Uh, you said being removed silently from the bug squad for being inactive. I think that's a bad practice because I can see it for myself. I, w I was active half a year, a year, two years ago. I'm not now due to my own personal situation, but I'm sure if I get removed, I'll be, I can't be following in the same way I'm now. And right now, as it is, I still have the opportunity, if I get the time, to say, hey, I can do this. I can help here. I think it's important to embrace also idle members, even though they aren't active now, because they are still potential members on the long run. If, if you have one customer in your web shop who bought one time, you won't remove his user profile because he hasn't bought in a half a year. It's still a potential. One way to quickly reactivate that would actually to get the email addresses of all those inactive old people of the different bug teams that were there and just email them. We are starting a bug squashing action for Joomla 2.5.5 and for Joomla 3.0. Um, everybody who has time, please come in and fix two uh, and test two bugs. We're not asking more, but this will be maybe 
if it's, if it's nicely written, right, uh, written, and there is some gaming in it also added. <laughs> Yeah, pizza bag and fun is is fun, but um, we need to invent something better. Um, because because typically p a pizza bag and fun is usually a, a fixed day and a fixed time, and uh, you're not always available there. But um, maybe a message: welcome back to the bug squad. Just welcome back. Um, if you're interested to to be in there, uh, then. Uh, you should consider during the next month fixing at least uh, testing at least two bugs. Uh, we that's our plan, and email them maybe once a month just to keep them up to date, keep them coming back, and make sure that notifications, automatic notifications, work. I want to comment on your earlier comment a while ago. Uh, you were saying that uh, extension developers were asked to join. Uh, that's a very good idea, and uh, knowing when the release is coming, you can test it, but you also need to test For example, for 2.5, the one test which was there, we were testing 2.5, everything was working. And when they released, we noticed this part because nobody happened to test it. But we, we actually found it by ourselves the day they released. So it was one day too late. So there should be the developers that should be some kind of list email we are getting. And uh, oh, there is next version from here are the features, so we can actually test it. If we, got, if we got emails from people and we would send those, I mean, is that something we should just yeah. just collect and, um, yeah, another channel of communication. Um, just, just to comment on what you said earlier, it's, it's also about the psychological thing, because actually uh, you mentioned it at the start of your presentation, you, you invited a couple of extension developers to join this discussion and they're not sitting here, and it's basically showing disappointment. And from this, this, this uh, the, the, the current state, or actually it is not the current state, but it's the, it's the state of two years or three years ago, um, we have to move from that psychological point actually to a new situation. And this new situation, well, we don't have a clue, like the practical things, it's, it's really hard, but to have a discussion, to have notifying, and uh, to, have, to have a more friendly approach, it's all coming basically to the point that, that perhaps the bug squad is, or the, the bug tracker, is one of the, um, the, the pillars of the Joomla community. And it's now treated like this archaic system, which is, which is us against them. And, and that's no point. It is a community-based thing, and that has to change. So perhaps by, by using social media or emails or... Right, that's or one of the <laughs> I think it's already happening. If you were here last year, many of us have were, uh, we were all so uh, working on our own things and uh, disappointment uh, and disappointed and uh, now everyone is trying to work to, together. So we are moving to that direction. Um, w when you're in an alcoholic uh, talking group, <laughs> yeah. the, the first step is to, to really share your experiences. The second step is to talk about it. The third step is to improve the situation. And perhaps, well, I, th I th really believe that Jane Beyond should be like uh, one of the platforms, the social physical platforms to do that so reacting on the pizza bug squad actually there should be should have been numerous bug squad meetings during We're talking about that ah. at, at breakfast this morning saying <laughs> well there, there's going to be fourth uh, I think why, some, why why we are so little people for the bug squad and for, for these parts of the community. 
is that it's based mostly on interest. We have an interest, a common interest in, in, the, in the better for the project. And I, I, this was supposed to be a developer conference, I know, uh, but we still see so many businessmen here. And these guys are all earning money in some way or another. I know many extension developers are too, uh, but just as much as many people are not there here for the interest. And we need to embrace that even more, promote it more. Maybe we, maybe there shouldn't be allowed access for businessmen here, so it can only be geeks, because these are the no guys who do. <laughs> no business cars, <laughs> a room for jab, perhaps. I don't know, but the first step for for converting businesses into to, to the interest also, in my opinion, would be something like you say at the alcoholic meeting, first it is denial. You're, no, you're not contributing to Joomla. You are, you're commercializing it on your own. You don't do any patches, you don't do any fixes, you don't do any translations. Many, many, many companies do, but just as many doesn't. Yeah, but I think that was last year, and this year is the second step. So we are moving forward. And, and don't be shy to use the email addresses that you have. Don't be shy. We have five minutes left. That's excellent because um, there's a w one last five-minute thing that I wanted to talk about. Uh, but just before that, don't be shy to use the JED emails list of people who have more than one extension on the JED. Email them. Email them even once a month. That's not an issue. Email to the 500,000 members of the forum maybe every three months or so, that's not an issue. They can opt out and that would be bringing up the community. If you need help to email 500,000 emails for free, that's not an issue. We are emailing to 450,000 people every week or so. It's 24 hours on our servers. We are on the, on the whitelist. We can do that for you if needed. That's a free offer of contribution that we're happy to make. Last thing that I would like to discuss in the last five minutes, we have discussed a lot about the bug squad and how to improve the involvement and the number of people in the bug squad. But there are also the committers. There are only a few committers on the list. There are those need to be able to have enough time to do the source code review in addition of the tests to make sure that the source code itself doesn't break something. We need to have more people there. There's a lot of very professional third party developers which are in this room also, which are in this building today. It's a good time to invite them to join people who can commit things and review source. If, you need, if you're growing and you need people to review source separate from people who commit to uh, offload the committers, do it. People are here to help and the rule could be you have the right to add a new feature request or a new bug provided you, you, you review two bugs and you help uh, source code review to other uh, improvements. For instance, but don't forget those people. So I know whenever I'm trying to send something out, I, I never know which communication channel to use to hit people, because I don't know what people are looking at. Um, so I would be curious as to, you know, what you guys would suggest, you know, where do you find out things if, what do you watch? What do you see? Like if I send it to the Google group, are you, watch, are you watching those or is there too much stuff? Or are you, does, is, it's too much, right. So does it have to be direct email or you're not going to see it? If it's personal, I think it should be email. Right. I'm, I'm thinking more that when we've, you know, um, when we just have, you know, like a general announcement about some stuff that we're trying to do with development, or we have a question is, you know, what's what's your opinion on X, Y, and Z, and we want to get it from, in general, from developers. Uh, I think you need to be, uh, you are aware of, of the target audience for, for the selected messages. Uh, like you say, public uh, request for comments should be public. But if it's some, something for, for example, the box squad, or to get their ideas of some, something, it should be on email, because that's the most personal way. Uh, I just got a crazy idea. In box squad, uh, you have uh, all the testers. Why don't you bind it uh, to what every tester was, has one developer, 
as a pair. If if it if it's possible, so you find as a as a tester you find their interesting box, and then if you need to verify it with a developer, you know who to contact. Mm -hmm. This is the rule that is used uh, in management, uh, the V uh, processing. So one uh, uh, analyst, uh, one uh, quali uh, quality control uh, development, uh, developer tester. So yes, you're right. Yeah, and we are doing it inside our team. Why can't we do it in Bug Squad? Um, perhaps because the, the management of Joomla is not s spending time on matching actually the, the persons but trying to manage the project as a whole. So like in a company I could imagine that human resources has, has uh, uh, the right information about the right people and let's, let's put this tester on that developer. Um, but I can imagine that there's going to be huge fights if the wrong tester is connected to the wrong developer. <laughs> I, I, I just just uh, yeah uh, just uh, <laughs> uh, just uh, for example in our team we have one person in Pakistan I would be happy to help him I just never thought about it so I think it's a good idea sorry I think it's a good idea uh, there were actually some kind of this thing going on one two years ago um, for example. I talk closely with Mark on some things and Elin on some other things. It wasn't like like a personal mentor, but it was more on an issue base. So if it was related to the ACL, I would talk with Elin about it. And we had we had some good talks and it worked fine. We we got some things done because it was too. Instead of having pairs, having pools. Yeah, but smaller. But I mean, <laughs> I'm happy that you're here. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much for having joined in here. I think it has been a very valuable and very, very constructive, productive uh, ses discussion session that we had. Uh, I saw Andy taking a lot of notes. Um, and thank you very, very much for joining us here uh, from the PLT. Um, I hope that you took some good ideas back. I would like also to tell you one thing, you can count on all of these people which are in this room to help you. You're not alone. And there are a lot of, to, of things to do. And I would suggest that people who want to actively help your business card or email to Andy so she can contact you and that we can get organized. As a next step, everybody agrees? Other ideas as next steps? So let's co co continue that discussion and action. Thank you.